Okay, here we go. In, in previous videos, we looked at absolute value and power parent functions. And then we looked at transformations and how they can work on any function. Now we're going to put it together to do multiple transformations on absolute value and power parent functions. Before we do that, let's start by recalling some information. So really quickly, let's recall X transformations. What you do for X transformations is you reverse the operations inside the parent operation. So you let's say reverse the arithmetic. How about that? Because transformations occur from arithmetic and we have a parent operation, which is not your basic arithmetic addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Y transformations, however, they the transformations are simply the arithmetic that happen outside the parent operation. And then if you've got, let's talk about the three types of transformations. If you have addition or subtraction, that's going to be a shift. If you have multiplication or division by negative one, that's a reflection. And finally, the one most people struggle with the most is if you have multiplication or division by a positive, then that's a, let's move this to another line here, then that's a stretch or a shrink or compression, if you will, okay? So those are the things we've talked about before. We're gonna put it all together now with some transformed power and absolute value functions. So let's do, let's do an example um, where we just focus on the transformations. Uh, so let's say, let's state the parent function and even, let's do its XY table. Then state the transformations in a correct order. It's important if you have multiple transformations that you do them in the right order, okay? So let's look at the function f of x equals uh, three times the quantity x minus four squared plus six, okay? So we've got multiple arithmetic operations here. And how do we do this? Well, okay, so the first thing's first. If you want the parent function, you have to basically strip away all of the arithmetic. So multiplication by three, so the parent function is if you strip away all the transformations, all the arithmetic, so strip away the three, strip away the minus four, and strip away the plus six, we can see that we just have y equals x squared. And that xy table is simple to generate because it's one operation. You know, we can put any neg any x values we want. So I'll do some negatives, zero, and some positives, and then square them to get the corresponding y values. No problem. So that part's done. Now we need the transformations. Now, if we go inside the, the parent function to get the x transformations, the x transformations, We only have one operation. So the operation we see inside is minus four. So the transformation is the reverse of that, which is plus four. So what does that mean on a graph if we add four to x? Well, that's a shift because it's addition. And it's happening to x, so shifting to the right. So this is a shift right of four units. The y transformations occur outside and they're just the operations you see. So if we if we got we got two operations. We got multiplication by three and add six. Well 
what's happening to the square first? Multiplication by three. So that's the first thing we have times by three. And second, after we multiply the square by three, we add six. So what are those in terms of transformations? Well, if we multiply y by three, all the y values are going to triple. They're going to get further away from the x-axis. So this is a vertical stretch. And what I mean by that is away from the x-axis by a factor of three. And then if we add six to the y values, that's up and down. We add six, it's going to shift up six. And those are the y transformations in a correct order. So we reverse the operation on the x. We don't reverse the operation on the y. Let's try another. So let's do this. Let's state the parent equation and its xy table. Then list the transformations in a correct order. So same idea, different function. Let's look at f of x equals um, how about 2 minus the absolute value of 4x minus 1. Yeah, a lot going on here. What I'd recommend here before you, you get started is to think about this in a little bit different form. This is the same thing as taking the negative absolute value of 4x minus 1 and then adding 2 because 2 is positive. I think that makes it easier to identify the transformations. So if we strip away all of the basic arithmetic here, all that's going to be left is y equals the absolute value of just x. We get rid of the multiplication by the negative, the multiplication of 4, the subtraction of 1, the add 2. This is all that's left. And again, parent xy tables should be simple to generate. We can put in any x's we want, so I'll do some negatives, 0, and some positives again. And the y values are the absolute values of those, so they're all positive. Aside from 0, 0 is not positive. So that's our parent function. The x transformations. The x transformations happen inside the parent operation. So we've got two operations, multiply by 4 and subtract 1. So the operations are times 4 and then minus 1. The transformations are the reverse of those. And here's something new. They're not only the reverse operations, they're the reverse order. Make sure you get that down. So the first thing we're going to do here is instead of, so instead of times 4 and minus 1, I'm going to go backwards and inverse the minus 1 first, which is plus 1, and then inverse the times 4 second, which is divide by 4. You don't change the number, you change the operation. So adding 1 to x, that's a shift right by 1. Dividing x by 4, all the x values are going to get smaller. They're going to get closer to the y-axis. So that's a horizontal shrink by 1 fourth. And those are the x transformations in a correct order. The y transformations happen outside of the parent operation. So we've got times a negative 1 and plus a 2. That's all there is to it. So first, times by negative 1. Second, add 2. If you multiply y values by negative 1, you're going to get a reflection vertically. So that's going to be over the x-axis. Reflect over the x-axis. Adding 2 to y is going to shift up 2. And there are the y transformations. A little bit easier than the x's. OK, 
Okay, let's let's do one or two more. Let's see how we can do this with graphing and why it's useful, how, how it can be done quickly. So now I'm saying graph using the parent and transformations. And let's look at the function f of x equals, um, uh, let's say the quantity 1 half x to the third power. and minus, I don't know, two, okay? So here's how you do this. You do not plot points. You do not plot points with this function. Do not plot points with this guy. Instead, you start with the parent and you transform it. So let's look at that. So the parent, here, if we strip away all the arithmetic in this equation, is y equals x cubed. Make the xy table, and we're going to focus on the xy table for our graphing, okay? Because we want our graph to be precise. At least that's my approach to transformations. Because when you get to trigonometry and calculus, you have to have pretty precise graphs. Okay, so x cubed, I can plug in anything I want. We'll do negatives, zero, and positives, and then cube those to get our y values. And I'm not going to graph it. That's all I need. Now I look at my equation to get my transformations. So I can see inside, inside the cube, I'm multiplying by a half. So my x transformation is the inverse of multiplying by a half. So it's dividing by one half. Well, dividing by a half is the same thing as multiplying by two. Okay, so what that means is, we haven't done this yet, but what that means is I'm gonna go to my x values and I'm gonna multiply all of those by two. Or if you like, you could divide them by a half. You'll get the same number, but it's easier for me in my head to multiply by two. The y transformations, there's only one, and it's subtract two. So I'm gonna to go to my y values and subtract two. I don't inverse the y operation. And what that's gonna do is it's going to give me a new table. And this new table will be the graph of my function. So, Multiply all the x values by negative or by two. And then subtract two from all the y values. Hopefully I didn't make any errors there. Now the original parent function had a reference point of zero, zero, that changed to zero, negative two. So when I start graphing my final graph. I'll use, I'll start at that reference point. So let me make a, a grid that's plenty big enough, hopefully. Something like this. I'm gonna start at zero, negative two, then one, negative one, four, so uh, two, three, four, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So knowing that this is a cube function, I know the graph does something like this on one side. And then I'll graph on the other side, negative two, negative three. Be careful plotting your points properly. Negative four, negative 10. 10, and does something like this. So this is where it comes in handy to start with your reference point and to know the shape of the parent function. Now. I didn't mention what happened to the graph, but multiplying x by two is a horizontal stretch by two. You can see this guy has been stretched left to right from the original x cubed parent function. Subtracting two is a shift down two units, and you can see it's been moved down two units. And that's all there is to it. That is our final, that is our final graph of this function.
So we all the only points we put were for the parent function, then we transformed them to get the xy table for our transformed function. Let's do one more to keep the video kind of short. Uh, let's see, we did, what do we do? We did an, we just did an x cube. We've done an absolute value. Let's do a, a squared function now. Let's say we have, um, how about five minus the quantity three minus x squared. We want to graph it using the parent and transformations. Stripping away all arithmetic, we can see that the parent function is y equals x squared, and we need its xy table to get going. Very simple to generate. Use some negatives, zero, and some positive x values. Square those to get the y values, and there we go. Now let's look at the x transformations. The operations here that happen to x are multiply by negative one and add three. So the operations are times by negative one and then add three. So the transformations reverse the operations and the order. So I'm gonna subtract three first. And then second, I will divide, I'm changing the operation by negative one. Okay, my y transformations happen outside. So the first thing happening to the square is times negative one and then adding five. So we've got first times by negative one and then second add five. Okay, so how do we do this? We have multiple x's and multiple y's. So let's go to the x column and let's subtract three from all of the x values first. And if, since we're gonna create a new table, let's go ahead and change our y values too. Let's go ahead and apply our first y transformation to our y column. Let's multiply these guys by negative one. Now this is not our final answer. This is an intermediate table after some of the transformations. So we get negative six, negative five, negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one and zero, and then change the sign of all our y values. So negative nine, negative four, negative one, zero, negative one, negative four, negative nine. So let's keep track of our reference point, which was zero, zero. Now it's negative three, zero in this intermediate step. Now we need to go ahead and do our second x and our second y. So our second x transformation is divide all of the new x values by negative one, and our second y transformation is add five to all the new y values. And this will be our final xy table for our, our graph. So all the x values change signs. So six, five, four, three, two, one, and zero. And then add five to the y's, negative four, one, four, five, four, one, negative five. Sorry, negative four. And our reference point is three, five. So this, this xy table is for the original function. If you want to, you could check. If you plug in six for x to this, you should get negative four. And you could check all of these order pairs if you like. Okay, let's graph it and see what it looks like. It should look like an x squared function. It should look like a parabola. The reference point is three, five. And then let's say four, four, and then five, one, six negative fours further down. So this side looks something like this. And then two, four, one, one, 
zero negative fours down there. So it looks something like this. And that's our graph. You can see it's shifted left three, reflected over the y axis, reflected over the x axis, and shifted up five units. And there we go. There are transformations of absolute value and power functions all combined. It looks ugly, but if you break it down to the simple steps, it's not bad at all.